Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Ah, glory be to Jesus. I am so excited to be here today because today is a special day. Today is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It's exactly four years today that we, uh, we started the uh, Daughters of Destiny Online Fellowship. It was a Saturday uh, um, in, the, in, you know, in the month of May, year 2011. And the Lord has been our help and our strength since that time. So we're going to worship God. We are going to bless the name of the Lord for what the Lord, you know, has been doing, you know, in our midst and what he will still do in years to come. Praise the Lord. If you're watching me live, please uh, don't forget to drop a comment and also to share with other people and, uh, uh, on, on the social media so that we can have more people watching this. Praise the Lord. Let's just begin to worship the name of the Lord and magnify his holy name. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. The Lord is a wonderful God. The Lord is a glorious God. He is the King of glory. He is the Lord of Lord. Who oh, is like unto thee? Oh, oh Lord, who is like unto thee? Oh, oh Lord. Who is like unto thee? Oh, oh Lord, who is like unto thee? Oh, Lord, among the gods, who is like you are glorious in holiness and faithful in praises. Do in wonders, hallelujah, who is like unto thee. Oh, oh Lord, who like unto thee, O oh, Lord, among the gods who is like thee, you are glorious in holiness and faithful in praises. Always do in wonders, hallelujah. I praise you, I praise you, oh Lord. I praise you, I praise you, oh Lord. In my Yes, I see what you are doing one more time. I lift my voice in praise of your name, of your name. I lift my voice in praise of your name. You are high. There is no one like you. Halle, 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 hallelujah. You are highly lifted up. There is no one like you. Halle, 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 halle. 
There is no one like you. Ale, 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 Believe that I, I believe that I, I sing with me, oh God. Believe that I, for you are, for you are, holy, righteous, and wise. and worship the name of the Lord. The Lord who calls and who backs up those who he call. The Lord that gave this invention, the Lord that gave this idea. Let's just worship his holy name. Let's magnify his holy name for he's a wonderful God, for he's a glorious God. There is no one like him. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the ancient of days. He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. No one like you, Lord. You are worthy, O Lord. Oh, we give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, we give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful, you are worthy, oh, Lord, you are wonderful. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, we give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful, you are worthy, oh Lord, you are wonderful. to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. How far omega you are. Worthy to be glorified. Yeah, you are worthy, Lord. King of glory, you are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. Ancient of days, you are. Worthy to be glorified, you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be glorified, you are worthy, Lord. Oh, Holy Father, you are worthy to be glorified, you are worthy, Lord. You are, and you are, you are. Worthy to be glorified, you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be glorified, you are worthy, Lord. All oh, thanks we bring to you, Lord. Sing with me, all oh, thanks we bring to you. You love all things, all things we bring to you, love. We bring to you, love. 
Praise your name. Father, we lift your name on high. Above every other name, we lift your name on high. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord, for the past four years. Thank you because, oh God, Lord, time after time, you make us to connect together, to share your word, to fellowship together. Blessed be your holy name. We give you all the glory. Give you all the praise. Father, as we go on in this program today, Lord, go ahead with us, send your word to us, encourage us in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, for good internet streaming. We pray that everything will go well. And at the end of everything, we'll have the fullest cause to glorify your holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we'll worship. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. I'm so, so excited and so happy today because of what the Lord is doing. Thank God because of the grace, you know, and for the privilege to serve the Lord. It's a privilege to serve the Lord. I want to appreciate him for this privilege he has given unto me to be a vessel unto honor in his hand. 
I can remember four years ago, um, uh, uh, on the 21st of May, exactly, the Lord spoke to my heart to start the Daughters of Destiny Online Fellowship. In God's word to me, say, just gather my children together, you know, to, to connect together, to share the word, and, you know, to be blessed. And I want to bless the name of the Lord because I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. A week after we, we started the online uh, fellowship, and to the glory of God, it has been growing over the years. Some of our sisters relocated. We have new sisters joining us, you know, on Skype. Every, every you know, two times in a month, we meet together to be blessed. And the Lord has been sending his word to us. We share the word, we pray together, we encourage one another over time. And there has been many mighty testimonies in our midst. Many have received their healings, lives have been touched, and you know, destinies have been shaped through this program. We bless the name of the Lord for what the Lord is doing. And today, it's exactly four years, four years that this online fellowship started. Praise the Lord. And uh, I'm so happy for the privilege to be in this part of the world and for the privilege to even use the internet, you know, for the purpose of evangelism, for the purpose of reaching souls and lives for the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the anniversary has started today and I want to use this medium to invite every, you know, all the sisters listening to me and watching me right now that um, to, today is the first day of the program and we'll be having the live streaming uh, like we are doing right away now on the, on the Ustream as you, uh, 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 channel. And tomorrow, 29th of, 29th of May, by 8 p.m. Nigerian time, we are going to be connecting on our, on, uh, you know, on our, uh, on our usual uh, net uh, place, that is uh, Skype. And the Skype ID is... Um, DOD stories uh, 96. We're going to connect together by 8 p.m. Nigerian time. It will be a special evening, you know, for our single sisters who have married Jebu H, but who are not married yet. And the theme of this anniversary is the mighty hand of God. And we'll be looking tomorrow at the mighty hand of God that connects, you know, that brings one, you know, the divine partners together. I will trust the Lord that after this anniversary, many of our sisters, you know, will get married. They will meet, they will be divinely connected, you know, to their partners, to the glory and the honor of the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then on Saturday, it's going to be the final day. From 12 p.m. Nigerian time, we'll be connecting again on, um, on our Skype uh, meeting. The ID, once again, is DOD Stories 96. We'll be connected together from 12 p.m. Uh, Nigerian time to be blessed by various ministers, you know, looking at um, um, different seminars and topics in relating to our life. For example, there will be a seminar on, you know, the hand of God in my, you know, in my career, the hand of God, you know, in my studies for our students. There will be the hand of God in my home, you know, for all the married sisters in the house. So I don't want you to miss it. You know, you to be part of it, you can just send and Heidi, you know, um, you can send a, a request to over uh, to the DOD Stories 96 and you'll be part of this program. And once you send in a request, just call in when the time of the meeting is here. Just call in, make sure that, you know, you make the call and then we can add you to the meeting. Don't just add DOD Stories 96. When it is time for the program, call in so that you can be connected to the program. Because you might be online and you might not want to join the meeting or maybe you are busy. So if you don't call, you don't call DOD Stories 96, we will not know that you are interested in, you know, in taking part in the meeting. Even though you have added DOD Stories 96 as your, uh, you know, as a friend, as a contact on, on, uh, on Skype. So please, I want to get a feedback from us. Are you hearing me clearly? How is the streaming going before we go into the word now? By the grace of God. So, you know, there is, beside the screen of the transmission, you will see video, social stream, and chat. In the chat, you can leave in a message, and then we can know that you are hearing. And like I said, you can drop a comment or, you know, you know, copy the link and put it, you know, on your Facebook page 
so that all the sisters too, you know, will be here. They will be able to connect, you know, and to be blessed through what the Lord has in stock for us today in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. So I want to say congratulations to all Daughters of Destiny members who are watching me now. And I also want to use this time to invite other sisters who are not part of this fellowship, but watching me now. You can connect to us and be part of the Daughters of Destiny online fellowship. You know, the Lord Almighty will bless you as you connect in the mighty name of Jesus. If you want to know more about us, you can also join our group on Facebook, Daughters of Destiny Publication. Please mind you, this group and these things I'm talking about is for sisters only, not for brothers. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please, it's for sisters only and not for brothers. Please, let's take note of that. And um, our website is www.dodonlinefellowship. Oh, sorry, dodonlinemagazine.com. Dodonlinemagazine.com. And the Lord bless us, you know, as we connect in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Like I said, if you are online, I know I have viewer from Trinidad and Tobago here. I have a viewer from Canada. And of course, from Netherlands here also. So please, if you are here on this on this program and you are watching live, please uh, connect, to, connect. You know, leave a chat or leave a comment so that you will know you are here. And you can also, you know, quickly go to your social media to re, you know to remind other sisters to be blessed. You know, as we're going to be blessed. Now, the topic before me today, the theme of our anniversary is the mighty hand of God. And we all know that the, the hand of God is powerful. The hand of God, you know. Is mighty, it can you know can set the captives free, it can deliver, it can you know, it can connect, it can lead. So we're going to uh, 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 as a means of starting this anniversary series, we're going to be looking at the hand of God that lead that you know that leads. It says I will instruct thee in the way to go. I will lead you and I will guide you in the way to go. Praise the Lord. So we're going to be looking at the topic being led by his by his hand. Being led by his hand. Being led by his hand. So the hand of God is going to lead us in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, the hand of God can do so many wonderful things. So one of the things that the hand of the Lord does is to lead us. To lead and to guide us. I want us to open our Bible to the book of Psalms chapter 139 verse 10. Psalm 139 verse 10. I believe you all know where the book of Psalm is. And if you are having a difficult time opening your Bible, you can uh, quickly check after Job. Psalms is, on, is after Job. Psalm 139 verse 10. I am reading from the New Living Translation here. It says, even then, you know, from verse 1, he was talking about examining my heart, know my thought, you know, and uh, check what I'm going to say and everything like that. Then in verse 10, it says, you know, anyway, from verse 9, it says, if I ride the wings of the morning, if I, if I draw by the Father's ocean, even there, your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. It says, your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. In another translation, it says, even there, your hand will lead me, and your right hand will lay hold of me. We're talking about the mighty hand of God, you know, doing exploits, doing wonderful things. The hand of God, you know, that is mighty to save, that is mighty to deliver. So, but today we are looking at the hand of God that leads, that leads, because God still leads his children today. God is still in the business of leading his children. Amen. So now, to everybody again, child of God, the hand of God symbolizes a lot of things. And, you know, the hand of God symbolizes, you know, his authority, his power, his supremacy, and the rest of it like that. So, let's talk about the hand of God leading and directing. Now, what does it mean to be led? You know, when you say, oh, I'm being led by God, or God is leading me, or somebody is leading me. Let's, 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 let's take, for example, this scenario. For, for, uh, for our sisters in the house that ask children, you know, maybe you have a toddler and you know who is, leading, who is learning to walk. What do you do? You hold the toddler's hand and you know you will guide their steps to walk. 
you hold them and you lead them, you know, you show the way, you show them, you know, how how they should move and how they should walk. So it's so so also is the same that the hand of God can lead and the hand of God can direct us at every point in time. Praise the Lord. The hand of God can lead and direct us at every point in time. So also to be led is to be shown the way. To be led is to be shown the way, like a mother holding the child's hand, you know, showing him or her the way to go. That is what it means to be led. Or to be going in advance. Maybe she knows when somebody when you have someone for direction and you say, just follow me. And you are going behind that person. That is to be led. That's what it means to be led. It also means to be, you know, to guide. You know, guide. Like I, the example I gave the other time, a mother guiding the child, teaching the child how to walk and how to move. And how things to, need to be done. You understand, you know, like you're training your child, you're guiding him. No, don't do this. This is what you need to do. You don't have to do this at this particular time. This is what you need to do now. Praise the Lord. So to be led is to be that, you know, is to be guided. Maybe in the uh, behavior or opinion, like, you know, children, you know, parents and children say, don't behave like that next time. So also when the hand of God is leading you, the hand of God can lead us and guide us in our behavior, in our opinion. Or it can even, you know, to be led is also to direct in a course. So, okay. Uh, that is, you know, to, 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 to direct. You want to start something, you want to do something, you be, you know, you want to invent something or you want to go about something. You believe that the hand of God, you know, will lead you and guide you in the way to go. Praise the Lord. So now, let's talk about, so it is only those who know God that can be led by God. So when you say the hand of God is leading you, it's because you know God. So what that means, there is one thing for you to recognize the hand of God. It is one thing for you to recognize the hand of God, I mean to say. It's another thing for you to, you know, to follow the hand of God. Just like a mother leading the child. You can show the child the way and say, this is the way. No, don't sit there. Don't stand there. But it is up to you, for you, you know, it is up to the child to take that uh, instruction or not. Like when the Lord dropped this idea into my heart and said, start the online fellowship. He was, you know, he was showing me the way to go. He was leading me. And, you know, he gave us a structure. So, you know, I choose to follow the leading of the Lord. I choose to follow what he has asked me to do. And when the hand of God is leading you, you can be rest assured that you will not miss it. You are safe. You cannot miss the road when God is leading you. Even though there may be challenges on the way, even though there may be problems on the way, but you can be rest assured that when God is leading you, nothing can go wrong. Let's take the example, the, the story of the children of Israel. The Bible says that with the mighty hand of God, the Lord led them out of, 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 you know, out of Egypt with his mighty hand. And he was showing them the way. The first thing they came across, you know, he said, come out, I'll take you to the promised land. And, you know, God taking them to the promised land does not mean they wouldn't encounter a problem on the way or anything. So being led by God or being led by his hand does not mean there won't be challenges. There will not mean there won't be challenges. But the only thing is that you can be rest assured that since God is the one leading you and you are following God, since God is the one guiding you, is holding your hand and you are walking side by side with him, you cannot make mistakes. When there are problems on the way, you can be sure that your guide, you know, will take care of that problem on the way. But in a situation you are doing what, you know, you are just going on your home. Nobody is leading, you know, nobody is leading you. Or you choose to leave the guide behind and you say, okay, yes, you want to show me the way. You just stay there and then you go there and then you begin to go. By the time you get to the front and you meet problem, what will you do? Is it that you run into that problem, you know, and that problem might finish that person or you go back, which means you waste time, you waste energy, you waste what you could have accomplished. You know, you have covered a distance, you left your guide behind and then now you cannot go forward again and then you have to run back. You know what? You, you, you know, you are making a reprogression. That is it. And then... Begging the guide now to, you know, to lead you again, you know, it's like the journey that you should make once, you are making it like three times. What am I trying to say? In the journey of life, as a daughter of destiny, don't leave God behind. Don't leave God behind. If there should be anything that you should be leave behind, it is your brain. Because if you were going to walk the, with the Lord, if the Lord is going to lead you and guide you, then you must leave your, way, your brain behind. Because the Bible makes me to understand that our ways are not his ways. I'm sorry, but I don't know. My nose is really giving me a, problem, a challenge here. But it is well in Jesus' name. 
So he says, my ways are not your ways, neither am I taught your thoughts. So what we, what we, we cannot see, he sees it because he's the God Almighty. Only because he's the God Almighty. The hand of God is powerful, is mighty, can lead, it can save. But the hand of God can save you when you are being led by his hand. When you are being guided by him. You know, when he's teaching you, you know, the way to go. Just like the book of Psalm chapter 23 says, he says, the Lord is my shepherd and shall not want. He says, he lead me beside the still water. That is the hand of God, you know, walking, to, you know, leading, guiding. He restores my soul. He says, yeah, if I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. But your rod and your staff, they comfort me. When God is leading you, Sorry, please. When God is leading you, you can be rest assured that everything is going to be fine. Everything is going to be okay. Even though there are problems on the way, then he will, you know, he will guide you and lead you in the way to go. And when God is leading you, when God is your guide, when God is your father, he's the one guiding you every step of the way as you are going. If you miss the way, depending on your relationship with him, he can, you know, put you back to track. Just like, you know, he says, your rod and your staff. The staff of God, you know, will comfort you. The rod is to beat you back on track. Praise the Lord. So the hand of God will lead and guide in the way to go. So what I'm saying is that, who are the people that can be led by the mighty hand of God? The believers in Christ Jesus. They are the ones that can be led, you know, uh, uh, by the mighty hand of God. It says, as many that has received them today and gave them power to become children of God. You cannot be led by, by God when you don't even know God. Abi, can you ask a stranger to lead you? Can you ask a stranger, you know, to lead you in the important decisions of your life? Even if you travel to some countries of the world, there are some countries that you dare not ask them for direction there. Because instead of them to lead you to the right place, they will tell you to go to the wrong place. But you know, in, in every place, in every way, you can, you know, follow God's leading. I don't know whether it has happened to you before that you are going and then you are lost in the midst of the way and you don't know where to go again, nobody to guide you. Then you suddenly remember that you have God on the inside of you. And you just tell God, God, please, please, please show me. Where do I need to go? Where do I need to go? Where do I need to turn to? And you know, you just hear God leading you. The Bible says that you hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, follow it. So God can lead. God can direct in the way to go. But he can only direct his children. Those who have given their life to him. The Bible says that the, the second set of people that can be led by the mighty hand of God are the humble, the humble and the weak. The Bible says that he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud, he gives grace to the humble. You know, I don't know whether you've seen, you know, in this situation, in this scenario before. Imagine this scenario between a mother and a child, or a father and a child going on the road, and you know, the father is saying, you know, go this way, go this way. And he said, no, 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 I will not go there. I will not go there, you know. It shows that the child said, well, I know the way. You can go on your own. Then you don't need to tell me. Who are you to tell me, you know, where to go? So it takes you to be humble and to be meek, to be led of God. And I pray that someone here today listening to me, listening to the sound of my voice, the Lord Almighty will give you a humble and a contract heart so that, you know, you will submit yourself to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And the journey that you have been making for years in the same circle, that today, as you humble yourself before God, the Lord Almighty, is hand will direct you. And make that journey of many years, you know, to go through for you in a short time, in the mighty name of Jesus. Another, pe another set of people that can be led by God are those who acknowledge God and get Him involved in all aspects of their lives. Those who acknowledge God. You know, many people today claim to be children of God, I'm born again, I'm this, I'm that. But how many people acknowledge God? A lot of people, they bring their plans before God and say, God, I want to buy a house. I want to go to school. I want to do my master's. I want to do my PhD. They don't care what God has in mind for their life. They don't care what God has in mind for their life. They don't, they don't, they don't know, you know, they don't care. They don't, they don't, they just, they have their own plans. They have their own life plan out. And each time, you know, they plan their life out, they just bring it to God. You understand? And say, okay, God, this is what I want you to do. Bless it, the bless it to me. Bless it for me. But as a daughter to a father, I say, so as a daughter to a father, God can lead you if you acknowledge him. 
Okay, one of our sisters is saying that she's having challenge with the link in the advert. Okay, all right. Um, you know, like I said at the last meeting, there's nothing we can do. The advert has to come in one after the other sometimes because uh, this is a free broadcast. So please, if the advert comes, just wait. You are not missing anything. It will still play the next one for you. Praise the Lord. I believe that next time we'll have to stream. It will be paid for and we will need to uh, stream the advert in Jesus' name. So, like I said, you have to acknowledge God. Says in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. When you acknowledge God, God will direct your path. When you tell Him that God, I believe in you, He will direct your path. What does it mean to acknowledge? To acknowledge, to acknowledge is to accept or, ad or to admit the existence of God. You accept it that without God, you are nothing. You accept that you know those projects you are going to do. If God is not involved in Him. If the hand of God is not in it, you, it cannot be successful. You accept that if God does not give you a child, then you can't have a child. You accept the fact that if God does not give you a husband, then there are many, you know, there is a huge, that you know, you cannot get the right man because you are what? You are God's daughter. Those who are God's children depend on him, believe in him for everything. They acknowledge him in all their ways. They don't make their decisions, you know, and then present it to God. They ask God for the mind of God. So those are the people who can be led by the hand of God. Those who acknowledge God and know the importance of God's leading. Those who knows that, those who acknowledge the fact that God cares about the minutest details of their life. Those are the people, you know, that can be led of God. Let's go to the scripture we read again when we started. In Psalm 139 verse 10, it says, Even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand will lay hold of me. Talking about the mighty hand of God leading. The hand of God has led in time past and is still leading today. All you just need to do is to acknowledge God. Is to acknowledge Him. Acknowledge that He is there and that He can lead and can guide in the way to go. Praise the Lord. So when you acknowledge God, His hand will lead you and will direct Him. And there are so many you know, examples in the scripture. And in our day-to-day -day life, of you know, they're showing us uh, you know, on how God leads today. God led before and is still leading today. And so his hand can guide us and show us the way to go. I will lead you in the way to go. I will guide your path. I will show us, you know, the path to take, the path of righteousness. Praise the Lord. So the hand of God is still leading today. Now, why do we need to be led by God? Why do we need to be led by the hand of God? Why do we need to be led, you know, to be led by the hand of God? It's because the, the hand of God is a powerful hand. It's a symbol of his authority and his power. So when we want the power of God in our life, when we want, the, you know, when we want, to, when we want God to intervene in our situation, then we need the leading of God. The Bible says in, 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 in the book of Proverbs, let's read the book of Proverbs, chapter 3. Why do we need to be led by God? I'm going to talk about three things why we need to be led by God. And we're going to end this broadcast. And we'll continue tomorrow in, on the program. I put my hands in your hands, oh Lord. I put my hands in your hands, oh Lord. I put my hands in your hands, oh Lord. I will not fail because Jesus never fail. If you put your hands in the hand of God, you will not fail. Why do we need to be led by, you know, by the hand of God? Why do we need? We have talked talk, talk about the hand of God guiding us, leading us, so that we can go through, so that we can be successful. Then why do we need the hand of God? Verse 5 of Proverbs chapter 3. Say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Trust in the Lord with honor in all your heart. Do not, you know, do not you know, lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, I repeat, all your ways, acknowledge God, and he will direct your path. What I mean to say is that, why do we need to trust in God? Why do we need God's hand to lead us? 
Why do we need God's hand to lead us? If you want to be successful in life, we need the hand of God to lead us. If you want to be successful in our endeavor, either in academics, our, you know, our mental life, our spiritual life, our physical life, in our finances, then we, <coughs> as God's children, <coughs> excuse me, we need the hand of God. Like I've mentioned earlier that it's only those who are God's children that can be led by him. Only God's daughter can be led by him. Only those who acknowledge him can be led by him. And so we need him to lead us so that we can be successful in life. You know, so that we can get great results. So that, you know, we can prosper in all our ways. So that, you know, our time, we will not waste our time doing, we will not invest our time doing the wrong thing. His hand will lead us to the right thing to do. If you want success, you don't want heart break, then you need the hand of God to lead you. If you don't want to waste your time, then you need the hand of God to lead you. Because if the hand of God is not leading you, and you are back on a journey that God has not sent you, or that God is not leading you to go, maybe you begin to take, you take a study, you know, in a particular course in the university, and then or you are doing masters in it, or, and then you go ahead to do PhD, and God is not leading you there. At the end of the day, you might even study and not even get a job, or even not be successful in it. So if we want to be successful, we need God to, um, to, um, um, to, we need to be led by the hand of God. And if we want direction, we need the hand of God because we need him to direct us. He's God. He knows all things. He knows what we don't know. He's a God of everyone and that. He knows what we don't know. He knows everything. Because he's the one that has created us. He's the one that made us. He's the one that you know that you know that we us together. He has a plan for our life. Just like he said in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. He says, For I know the thought I think towards you, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So if you want to be successful, if you want to, you know, to get direction, we need to be led by God. Praise the Lord. I'm so sorry. I don't know. My nose is twitching so much. So so much. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I have to uh, touch it a number of times. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so if you want direction on the path to take and you want to get to your destination in life, you, you, then you need the hand of God to lead you. If you want peace in your life, another reason why we need the hand of God is for peace. If you want peace in your life, then you, you, know, you need the hand of God to lead you. Maybe talking about whom to marry, yeah? To the, to, by the grace of God, we'll be talking to single sisters tomorrow. And we'll be talking about uh, the hand of God, you know, you know, connecting, you know, his daughters to their husband. So if you want God's hand, if you want God to lead you to the, you know, you need the hand of God to lead you in marriage. Because God knows all men. He created all men. He knows the heart of every man. You cannot know a man's heart by just looking at his physical appearance. Maybe he's handsome, he's good looking, or he's tongue, you know, tongue talking, demon chasing. Because... Even though the fact that something is good does not mean that it belongs to you, that it will be good for you. Because you are God's daughter, he knows what is the best for each one of his children. He knows the best for his children and he will only give us the best. But he will give us the best when we are ready to be led by his hand. A lot of people are in problem today. A lot of people have run into so many problems and they have not been able to get out because they went on their own way. They left God behind. Instead of leaving their brain behind, they left God behind and they are moving ahead of God, running ahead, you know, trying to get to their destination faster in life. You cannot get to your destination faster, you know, without God. So if you want to make, you know, progress in life, you want to move, you want to get to your destination in life, then you need the hand of God to lead you. You need the hand of God to lead you and to guide you. So like I was saying that, you know, you need the hand of God, you know, in the choice of whom to marry, the choice of, you know, even where to stay. You need God's hand to lead you in everything. Some people will say, well, God doesn't care about the clothes we wear. You need the hand of God, you know, to direct you and to lead you in taking decisions that are paramount, you know, to your life, unto your destiny, and to your home. We need the hand of God. He says, I will do what he said. Even my hand will lead me. Even your hand, the hand of God will lead us. And his right hand will lay hold on us. When the hand of God is leading us, we can be sure we will not miss it in life. When the hand of God is leading you, you can be sure that you will get to your destination faster. When the hand of God is leading you, you can be sure that all things, you know, will be fine. Whether there are challenges on the way or not, you can be sure that God is doing what? He is holding your hand and he will take you to your destination and you will get there fast in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Yeah, and finally, why do we need the hands of God, you know, to lead us? Why? What is the importance of his hand? Because the hand of God brings deliverance. The hands of the Lord, you know, you know, will lead you, you know, will deliver you from evil, will deliver you from problem. When the hand of God is guiding you, even when there are problems on the way, the hand of God will make sure that you jump over the problem. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The hand of God will keep you so that you know evil does not overtake you. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So it is important for us to be led by God. I, I don't know, you know, I want us to put our hands in the hand of God. And I don't know how many people are going to make this decision today. To put their hands in the hand of the Lord. If you put your hands in the hands of the Lord, you can be assured of victory. You can be assured that you know you will not fail. You can be assured that you know you will get to your destination early in life. You can be assured that you know God is the one leading you on this journey. If there are challenges on the way, you can run back to the Lord. I want us to close our eyes and talk to God in prayer. And say, Father, I put my hands in your hands, O God. Lord, I put my hands in your hands, O God. I, I will not fail because you have never failed. Jesus has never failed before, so you can trust him. You can trust him for leading. You can trust him, you know, for direction. You can trust him, you know, to, you know, to lead you through. I don't know what decision you are about to take in your life. I don't know what decision you know you want to take, maybe concerning your children, concerning your life, concerning your career. I want you to talk to the Lord and say, Father, I put all this before you, O God, Lord. Let your hand guide me and lead me. Let your hand guide me and lead you. Acknowledge God in all your way. Tell God that, God, I cannot do this without you. I need you to lead me. I need you to guide me. I hope we are praying wherever we are. I need you to lead me, to guide me in the way to go. He said you will hear a voice behind you. If you ask for God's leading, he will lead you. God still leads today. He might be true his word. We will talk about that at another time. How does God lead? How do you know the mind of God? He might be true his word. He will just give you a word. You know, concerning that situation, <clears throat> you know, that has remained unchanged, as that the hand of the Lord will lead you in the name of Jesus. <coughs> God, he will pray with God for your leading and for your direction, O God. In the name of Jesus, we cannot do anything without you. We cannot do anything without you. We cannot do anything without you. Pray for your leading and your direction. Are you about to take a decision? Are you about to, you know, to, to, to do something? You know, and uh, everything seems, uh, you know, clustered and there is no way out. Ask that the hand of the Lord will lead you. Ask that the hand of the Lord will lead you. Say, I will lead you in the way to go. Ask that his hand will lead. Will lead. The hand of God still leads today. And the hand of the Lord brings deliverance. The hand of the Lord brings, you know, joy. Ask that the hand of the Lord will lead you. In the name of Jesus. Lord. Is it concerning your, your child? Is it concerning your husband or your parent? As that the hand of the Lord will lead. Will lead, you know, to help you to take the right decision. Because God is the wisest God. So God is dependable. If you want success in your way, ask that his hand will lead. Concerning his plan and purpose for your life, say, I will lead in the way to go. As that the hand of the Lord will lead. In the name of Jesus, in the way to go. In the name of Jesus. I put my hands in your hands, O oh Lord. I put my hands in your hands, O oh Lord. I put my hands in your hands, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, I will not fail because Jesus never fell. God is saying to someone today, daughter, put your hands in my hand. Put your hands in my hand. You can be sure that you can, you know, you will not fail because God has never failed. You need to be led by the hand of God because God has never failed before. So he, you, he can be trusted. Surrender your heart to him. If you have been taking decisions, you know, before him, before, you know, you have been taking your decision, running ahead. If you have left God behind, go back to God now. Go back to God and say, Father, I want you to lead me. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Let your hand lead me in the decision of who to marry, in the decision of what I need to do next, in the decision of, of my career, of my home, 
you know, of the calling of God. Maybe you even have the call of God upon your life. You feel God wants to use you. You don't know how. How's that the hand of the Lord will lead you? Maybe it will just be like, you know, like the way God spoke to me some time ago about this vision that we should start an online, you know, uh, 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 fellowship. Like maybe it's, it's just an instruction that you need. How's that the hand of the Lord will lead you? If the hand of the Lord is leading you, no matter the challenge, no matter the problem, I want you to know that God will not leave you there and you can be sure of victory. That together with God carrying you, you will be above all challenges. You will be above all problems. Why? Because God is the one leading you. And you can always run back to God and say, God, I am staying on track. The way you place me is where I am. You can be sure that God is leading you. You can be sure that God is leading you. So cry unto God and talk to God. Says in all your way, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Acknowledge God today and say, Father, you are the only one that can lead me. You know, if you want to get to your destination in life, you want to fulfill destiny. Just like our name is Daughters of Destiny. You need to be led by the hand of God. Ask that the hand of the Lord will lead you. And if you are here to give your life to Jesus, like I mentioned during the teaching, that God's hand cannot lead you if you are not born again. This is the time to take a decision. Close your eyes. Confess your sins to God and say, Jesus, I ask, I ask for your forgiveness of your sin. And invite Jesus into your life, you know, as your personal Lord and Savior. If you are taking that decision, you can contact us, you know, for, you know, for, uh, 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 so that, you know, we can be praying for you. And we can, you know, uh, uh, be lifting you up before God. So if you are not born again, take that decision and give your life to Jesus. And confess your sin to him. First confess to him. Invite Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, and as the Holy Spirit of God continue to guide you in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we bless you in Jesus' name. We pray, Father, we put our hands in your hands, O God. The Lord, you will guide us and you will lead us in the way to go, God. Father, we know that when our hands are in your hands, when you are leading us, we can never miss it. We know that when you are leading us, O God, Lord, we can never fail. We know that when you are leading us, we can never run into problem. So, Father, let your hand guide us and lead us in the way to go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this vision. Thank you for Daughters of Destiny. Thank you for all the sisters that are connected from different places, from Thailand, Canada, watching me live from United Kingdom. Father, I pray that your hand of grace and mercy, O God, will rest upon your daughters as they are watching live and those who will still be watching live after now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, for those who oh God Lord, who need your instruction and your direction on the next thing to do concerning your ministry, concerning their career, concerning the whole. Daddy, I pray that your mighty hand, Lord, will lead and guide oh God, in the way to go in Jesus' name. And for those of oh God who are being guided by your hand at this time and are facing challenges, Father, I pray that your hand will hold them tightly, that they will not slip away in the mighty name of Jesus. All of us as a group, as a fellowship, will pray. That your mighty hand will keep us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I believe the Lord has blessed you with this, uh, uh, with this transmission. I believe one or two things have been dropped into your heart. And we shall continue tomorrow on Skype. We are not streaming tomorrow. We are all connecting on DOD Stories 96 tomorrow. You know, for the day two of the anniversary. And I say to every one of us, once again, happy anniversary. And the Lord bless us real good in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, sisters. Happy anniversary.